Hello, and what we're going to do is we're going to do unit uh, 5-2, which is going to be biogenous and hydrogenous sediments. Biogenous sediments actually deal with bio-created sediments. These usually come from the hard parts of once-living organisms like shells or teeth or uh, more shells. And you can see this picture actually shows you quite a bit of the um, fossilized material or material that's actually just fallen out, corals, shells, sea dollars, um, many other things in there as well. This is a uh, sedimentary rock made of shells put together. Um, it actually is calcium carbonate, just like a limestone, so it's a limestone-ish rock, um, but it's made primarily of seashells, rather or large seashells rather than the small seashells. Distribution of life giving life born sediments, biogenous sediments. Um, they're called oozes if the sediment is 30% more biological material. And here's a picture of an oozy type sediment. They tend to be squishy, oozy material. This is a group of uh, military people that are actually trying to uh, show camaraderie uh, by crawling through the mud. And you can see it's a mud flat. Um, I don't know what the water is over here, but during high tide it comes over. Uh, usually it shows very biologically active. Um, there probably are clams and other things, worms and other things that are growing in this sediment. So it makes it really cool to walk through or to, in this case, crawl through. It does show biological productivity. 30% um, biological activity to, or 30% biological material does not have to be living material. It can be dead material. Uh, they tend to have a a really distinct odor to them. Um, pretty easy to figure out. Uh, dissolution, if uh, we get more fresh water into it, we may actually get some of these things to dissolve. Um, the shells will actually settle into an ocean. They'll dissolve if we have a dissolution type material. And if we also get water moving in, uh, we may get di uh, dilution by non-biologic material where we actually move material in it's not biologic. It could be other terogenous material or um, some other material that's not so bi biological. We have two basic types of oozes. The first one's called cal calcareous ooze because it's primarily made of CaCO3, calcium carbonate. Microscopic protozoans and foraminifera. Um, protozoans tend to have normal looking shells, although if you put these in your hand, they would be, um, you know, very, very, very tiny. Uh, foraminifera tend to have these uh, star-like shapes, but you can see that they've got holes in them. Microscopic algae and coccolithophores. Coccolithophores are, um, these are not true color. I'm not sure why they did this, but they're incredibly beautiful, um, complicated life forms. And you can see they're primarily filter feeders. Um, or they're actually, you know, like a nautilus. That, uh, they're still going to eat microscopic critters, but they're not filter feeders at this end, and we have filter feeders over there. We actually utilize uh, calcareous oozes, or material that's actually made out of these, which are called limestone. We can grind it up into chalk, and we actually make it chalk. We make chalk out of chalk, and you can have colors, and you can actually flavor chalk as well, like Tums. Um, these tend to not be so well ground. They have larger pieces inside of them. Um, believe me, I've eaten enough chalk to realize that. And Tums does a really good job of grinding it up. Um, puts flavor in it and colors in it, just like they put for chalk. They don't put flavors in the chalk, but they put colors in the chalk to make it more pleasing. Here's a picture of the Dover Cliffs. This is actually made, this is in England, this is made out of chalk. And if you take a look, you can see the layers that was actually just dropped down. This was underwater a long time ago. Um, it has now risen up above sea level. But basically, for years and years and years, all these little calcareous creatures um, died and filtered out of the water. And just a layer upon layer upon layer upon layer upon layer. And they get older as they go down. So this is the youngest layer. And you can actually see once it's exposed, and this is all made out of this chalk material, once it's exposed to the uh, atmosphere, 
water, wind, and waves, um, it actually breaks. So the people that are walking next to this area right here are walking next to um, probably the least resistant of the chalk, and eventually this stuff will fall off. You know, the, the layer used to be way the heck out here, the cliff used to be way out here, and you can actually go there and see chalk falling off. Here's a larger picture of chalk um, before it's ground up or before it's actually flavored, but this is what this rock is made out of, or this cliff is made out of. Calcareous is Dover, England. The White Cliffs of Dover, in fact. We also have what are called siliceous seas. This is made out of silicon dioxide, and there are critters that actually make their shells out of calcium carbonate, and there are critters that make it out of silicon dioxide. These are called protozoans, um, which actually look like these. Uh, radiolarian are very similar to that as well. And then we also have microscopic algae, and we have diatoms. Diatoms um, actually are small pill like creatures. Uh, that actually are showing again filter feeding, um, very small. These are what we would basically call um, uh, plankton, but these would be zooplankton because these are animals. Diatom earth and filters. Um, here's a larger picture of diatoms, and you can see they almost all have holes in them, which allows us to actually make fossil shell flour, anti caking agent. Um, which is actually amorphous, which is, means that they're made of different types of shapes and sizes, silica, and it's actually food chemical grade. And here's a picture of a guy actually holding some of this material, and you can mix this in with bread. Uh, you can actually take this as a um, supplement in the morning, and it's supposed to do all kinds of wonderful things. I'll show you some uh, in class. We can also use them for pool filters. Um, because they have the holes in them, that actually we can bring water into it and it'll actually trap small organic and non-organic material. Um, here's a, another view of it and you can sort of see it there. So we just put the water through and the water goes through these bags of diatominous earth. Uh, they will eventually get plugged up with the material. You do have to replace these things. But here's the pool, and we actually bring the water, the drains, we bring the water in, and we pump it into filters and maybe even heaters, and then we kick it back out into the pool, and it actually returns into the pool. And then we can have skimmers in there as well. But if you've ever been to the pool, you see all this stuff. This is usually in the deep end because it, stuff settles down into that area. Shells, silt, clay, um, all fall through the water column down to the surface. Um, calcium carbonate, which are the blue little circles, and siliceous um, ooze are the green triangles. And you can sort of see that they do fall out. Um, this is the East Pacific Rise, which is an area of divergence in the western part of the Pacific Ocean off the coast of South America. And we talked about this. A rise actually means um, faster divergence. It usually is shallower tilt to the ridge. That's why we don't call it the specific ridge. We call it the specific rise. It's a gentle rise. And any depth above 4,500 meters usually gets a calcium carbonate icing to it. Um, basically what happens is the critters die. Um, most of them are living up here because they um, like light or they actually like to eat the things that like light. The zooplankton like to eat phytoplankton. Plankton just usually means small critter and then we can have animal and plant type plankton. But they usually are up here in the um, area that receives light. And then when they die they actually sink down. Um, what happens usually is the siliceous ooze is um, inside, but it doesn't make up as much as the cal calcareous ooze, and we get this layer of calcium carbonate ooze. But then when we get depths below 4,500 meters, uh, what happens is the calcium carbonate starts to dissolve, and that allows the radiolarian ooze, the siliceous ooze, to go on top of it. And then we may even get abyssal clays on top of it, the terogenous material. And so we're going to the North Pacific Basin. This area, I don't know how far this actually is showing, but this is probably 30, 40, 50 miles. Uh, we can go back up to the ridge up there, which is, again, covered with calcium carbonate because it's above what's called the CCD, which I'll show you on the next slide. It's calcium carbonate, um, basically uh, where the calcium carbonate ooze does form or where the calcium carbonate ooze doesn't form. Okay, then we get to the neuritic biogenic sediments. And if you remember this picture that talks about shallow water versus the deeper water, the pelagic uh, biogenic sediments. 
So we actually have moder modern carbonates. These tend to be not as old as some of the other ones. They are in shallow warm water. So we're talking about coral reefs, and I think this is a totally cool place to uh, add to your bucket list. Uh, where you take a boat over to an atoll. Um, this, you know, used to have a volcano in here. The volcano's gone, has calcium carbonate uh, reef on top of it. And you pull your boat up and you actually check in and you have one of these places and you can bring your boat. You can see there are boats in there. I don't really see any boats around here, but you can sit right over a uh, floating atoll um, and actually probably go snorkeling and scuba diving. They do have a pool as well. Um, you also have oolid shoals. Um, these are where we get sand or small parcel, pieces of bone or teeth that actually get a calcium carbonate uh, covering on top. So there's the piece of sand, which could be terogenous, could actually be a part of a shell. Um, but we get this calcium carbonate coating on it, and these are called oolid. And here's an oolid shoal. This is off the coast of uh, the Yucatan Peninsula. Um, but basically, it would look like a white sandy beach, except that they would be nice and round versus uh, some maybe some of the other shapes you've seen on, on beaches. You also have beach sands. Um, they tend to also be biologic um, because this is biogenetic sediment. These are calcium carbonate ground up seashells, um, and they make beautiful white or pink beaches, uh, usually in tropic area, tropical areas where the um, area out there tends to be shallow and biologically productive. And then you also have stromatolites, and these uh, actually show hypersaline or very, very saline environments, maybe too saline for other things. Uh, they are cyanobacteria. They're one of the first life forms to photosynthesize, blue-green algae. And here's a picture of stromatolites. The outer crust, just like coral, is the only thing that's alive, and the inside uh, skeleton um, are from all the ancestors. Uh, this is Shark Bay and uh, off the coast of Australia, and you can go there and swim amongst the stromatolites, and they probably are nurseries for small fish and crustacea, just like regular coral reefs, although it's not a coral, it's a stromatolite. Then we have the pelagic biogenic sediments. These tend to be in deeper water. You have siliceous oozes, ooze beneath the surface um, around the upwelling areas. And these upwelling areas tend to be very biologic. This looks like a white smoker again. And again, you have the molten rock up close to the surface, probably a divergent area. Could also be a submarine canyon. Uh, heats up the water, dissolves the material, comes up, gets the cold water, the material solidifies, and depending on the solidification, depending on the material that solidifies, you either get the black smokers showing magnesium and iron, or you get the calcareous type oozes um, for calcium and uh, aluminum. But we basically, you get this stuff, and you can get these chemical synthesis areas growing in this area, but they uh, produce the siliceous oozes because they tend to be below that 4,500 barrier. Anything above that, you get the calcareous oozes, and again, that's the calcium carbonate composition depth, um, where anything above that, you get calcareous oozes, and usually below that, you get the siliceous oozes. Uh, calcium carbonate dissolves in cold water, and if you remember, cold water, 4 degrees Celsius is the drop um, at the very bottom. It drops down to the very bottom, and that tends to be too cold for calcium carbonate. It just dissolves in the water. The uh, carbonate composition depth of the CCD, um, it's actually called marine snow. And if you take a look at peaks, seamounts, or mid-ocean ridges that tend to be above that 4,500 depth, um, you actually do get this calcareous ooze. Uh, high productivity, if you get lots of critters, you don't really get the ooze because the life is actually pulling the calcium carbonate to make shells, and it's not actually making it down to the ground. Um, or down to the surface because it's dissolved in the water. It also dissolves in water that's cold, so um, it actually looks like marine snow. Um, there's a mid-ocean ridge, and again, if, as long as you're above that 4,500, the CCD, the, cal the carbonate cal compensation depth, you get this icing of calcium carbonate, 
and then if it gets below you can see the icing is still there but it gets covered by clays and siliceous oozes usually the siliceous ooze is the bottom and the clays at the top but all the materials going down if it's a calcium carbonate creature that gets down here it dissolves in the water if it's a siliceous critter down here um, usually what happens is there's so much calcium carbonate that it actually looks like a calcium carbonate icing even though it's got some other things and like I said before uh, most of the sediment that's on the ground of the ocean or on the floor of the ocean actually is made up of all four types of the biogenous hydrogenous lithogenous and cosmogenous although not so much cosmogenous material Calcareous ooze is deposited above the CCD or the carbonate composition depth due to water temperature. Siliceous ooze and clays are deposited below the CCD. Then you have what are called hydrogenous, waterborne sediments. These are dissolved ions um, that are in the water because water is the universal solvent. And for whatever reason, they precipitate out. Um, if you get manganese and iron and gold and platinum coming out you get what are called manganese nodules and they usually have again just like oolus they've got something in there that um, starts the whole process it could be a bone or a tooth or a rock or something but then this um, layer upon layer upon layer upon layer of manganese and other materials forms on top ferromanganese nodule so it's an iron manganese nodule you also get, have what are called inor inorganic carbonate salts um, these are like uh, carbonate salt, um, which is actually a salt that comes out. It's not from an organic creature, um, but it actually is a salt that makes up uh, some of the ocean, some of the hydrogen sediments. You also have metallic sulfides. Uh, these tend to be uh, metal with sulfur. They are beautiful samples, pyrite, fool's gold, uh, galena, which is lead sulfide, cinnabar, mercury sulfide, um, golds, yellows, grays, silvers, reds, um, really beautiful minerals and they can be used to pull out like uh, pyrite. There's a pyrite mine in Prince William Forest Park with, that we actually used to, uh, for iron ore back uh, in the 1800s. You also have what are called evaporites. Evaporites are just like what they say, the water evaporates and it leaves the material behind. This is uh, actually halite. This is uh, the salt flats at uh, um, Death Valley, and you can see it actually when it, when it rains, the, some of the salt dissolves and it makes these little ponds, and as it dissolves, it makes this little wall around the outside, and then eventually the water um, disappears. It rains there in the spring, uh, not so much any other part of the year, and you can go there and walk on this. It's all flat as a pancake, although crunchy. And this is gypsum. This is a gypsum crystal that actually had room to form. Uh, otherwise, it looks more like this material. Uh, this is a picture of the um, Atlantic Ocean and the Mediterranean Sea back when um, they may have actually had the historic flood that's uh, so much in the Bible, uh, where lots of people used to live in this area. And what happened is the ice melted, um, or there was a dam here. And basically, what happened is you had a flood. You had this accumulated water that will eventually fill in the Mediterranean Sea. And if people, these were freshwater lakes. Um, people lived by these lakes and fished by these lakes. And we actually know that they're freshwater because down in the sediments we find freshwater creatures um, covered by salt water. Salt water is more dense, so it actually is at the bottom and it killed everything that was down there. So this is how we can get evaporites. Uh, if this thing were to evaporate away, the Mediterranean Sea would be just like Death Valley, just covered with um, halite and gypsum and some other evaporitic uh, material. Manganese nodules, um, if you take a look, they are very iron and magnesium rich. Uh, there are a lot of people that would like to get these. They are very low rate of accumulation. They don't form very quickly. Usually it takes hundreds and thousands of years. Uh, larger nodules grow faster than the smaller ones, and we're not exactly sure why that is. And we don't have any idea why they formed or how they formed. But we do know that they're worth a lot of money. So there are companies that will um, make like these bulldozers with these treads that go down onto the ocean floor and they move around and again there's no light down there so um, they actually do have lights on them so and cameras so the the guys up in the ship 
um, can actually see what's going on. And they'll go down there and they'll actually pick up these nodules and they'll go into uh, a, an area and they'll get sucked up to the ship and people can do this. Now the problem with that is that there's a there's habitat down here for any other biologic creature. Um, it gets destroyed as well as the creatures that are down there. And because these nodules may actually give a little bit of protection because there's no, really nothing else down there but sediments, uh, we may actually find out. And these, these actually form where they don't, there's not very much sedimentation. So there are sediments down there but it actually destroys the habitat for biologic creatures. And as you can see, this is the end of uh, the second part of Unit 5. So I appreciate you stopping by. Hope you got good notes. Hope you have questions to ask me when we get back to class. Bye.